to really have a good time today tidying up our event tech stack. Okay, so my name is Kiki Latalian, and I am so excited to introduce my Keep or Toss Going Marie Kondo on Association Offerings Interactive session for you today. Uh, if you are not familiar with Marie Kondo, I hope you are. If you're not familiar with Marie Kondo, uh, Marie Kondo has a lot to offer as far as teaching us about tidying up. And here's a test for those of you who are familiar with her. What is she best known for asking? If you know the answer to that question, go ahead and answer in the chat. I am so curious to see uh, what you're going to answer with. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with me, while people are answering that question, I'm an association management consultant with Tecker International. I'm an advisor to EventMobi, and I'm also the host of Association Chat, which is an online community and podcast that's been around since 2009 and reaches about 72,000 association professionals worldwide. Uh, the association shows programming. It promises to help you reinvent your association strategies for events, membership, and leadership. And so that's the whole purpose of today's session about Con Marie, the Keeper Toss, Going Marie Condo on association offerings. And I'm looking over here in the chat, and what do we have? What sparks joy? Adam? Adam, you are the winner. You won. You are absolutely correct. Marie Kondo is known for asking, what sparks joy? Does it bring you joy whenever she approaches an item that she's questioning whether or not it should be kept or it should be tossed? Now, the Comary method made famous by Marie Kondo stresses this tidying everything up in your home, on your desk, in your offices. She says that decluttering your entire space in one fell swoop is the way to do it. Now, for association executives, event planners, those of us who are out there trying to figure out what do we have as far as our association offerings that we can just do away with, very rarely can we do it in one fell swoop. But what I'm going to challenge you today with is to think about the Marie Kondo method and to actually go through this process of looking at some of your association offerings and figuring out whether it's something you should keep or toss. So if we look at associations and we begin to think about the way that we're going to apply this, then we are probably going to be super surprised if somebody answers the question, does this spark joy, looking at something like their association management system and say yes. I mean, very rarely does an AMS spark joy, am I right? If it does, please share your stories. I'm sure everyone would like to hear them. But what I've decided to do is for today, we're going to break these key concepts that Marie Kondo has for approaching decluttering. And we're going to break these down in different areas, starting first with looking at your virtual and hybrid event platform. All right. So the three questions we're going to ask, does it match the purpose? Are you using it effectively? And does it spark joy? Now, Marie Kondo has a whole process uh, that goes along with this to get us in the right mind space. And so I'm going to actually duplicate that process in my own special association centric way uh, by ringing the bell to clear out the energy we're lighting incense, yes. And if I set fire to my desk, somebody please come and save me, Torben. This is really, this really went really high, didn't it? Okay, so, so here we go. This is probably very strange for all of us. My dog, who is my colleague in my home office is looking at me strangely. Okay, so we clear out the bell, bell clear the energy, ring the bell, light the incense, and we're going to put your mind in the right place for tidying up your association tech stack. All right. Now, as we approach our first question, and I'm, I'm looking over here to see who's really interested in, oh, hugging your kitchen cutlery. Yeah, that's a bad idea. You don't want to get cut. Paul, we want you around with us. Um, 
virtual hybrid events, even if you're good at clearing out the clutter of your home, your association tools and tech can be harder to shift. Agreed? Yes. So the first thing that we want to consider, the first area is, does it match the purpose? Does platform match the purpose? What is the purpose for your virtual or hybrid event? Was it to connect members with each other? to provide better education? Was it to connect sponsors and exhibitors with potential customers? Uh, what's the purpose? And so a hybrid event allows people to connect in person if they want that human connection experience. A hybrid event also allows individuals who otherwise wouldn't be able to participate to attend, uh, even if they can't be there due to health concerns, COVID, travel constraints, what have you. We're very familiar with all of these things. And so I want you to think about the purpose and then think about the platform. So my Tech International colleagues, they talk about matching the platform to purpose. And if you're thinking about the purposes that you shared, is your current platform checking these boxes? Is it helping people connect online and in person? Is it really helping people? And if so, how? Really think about this. How do you know? How are you measuring it? What questions are you asking? How are you investigating this? What are the elements of purpose that you have and how is it matching with your current platform? The second thing that we want to think about is, are you using it effectively? Is this something that you want to keep? Is it something that um, you wish to keep or do you want to explore something new? Can you really answer that if you're not using it effectively? Sometimes we have the absolute best tools available to us and we're not using them effectively. We don't know about the features. Uh, they might have a lot of features, but we're not sure how to use them. And so I want you to think about a different way to approach this question. If you're not using your platform effectively, then ask yourself, is it because of training and education? Is it you need to train staff or you need to train yourself? You need to better understand for yourself um, about the tool that you have, the platform that's available to you. Is it because the platform's difficult to use? Is it because of the user experience? Is it too complicated? Or is it because of something else? Not having the right integration with other tools um, can really complicate things. So if it's something else, that, that might be possible. And then I want you to think about your platform or your tool that you're using right now your purpose, and I want you to type into the chat, type into the chat uh, ask, answering this question. Does your platform right now match to the purpose? And I'm just curious if you want to add what platform or tool you're using, that would be awesome. Is your platform matching the purpose? Oh my gosh, I'm looking over at the chat what you've already put in there. I'm missing some really great conversation as I am sharing this with you. And I have to say this incense, I don't usually light incense, but it smells really good. It's sparking joy already. Okay, so go ahead and type into the chat. And as you're typing in there, as you're typing in there, I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. Finally, we're going to want to think about does it spark joy, you know? Um, and the way that you can think about this for an association offering is, did it fulfill your original hopes and dreams? Did it surprise you with something new or an unanticipated bonus, like bonus, del there's delight, there's something about it that's working really well. I mean, maybe spark joy is not exactly the thing that we're going for, but maybe it's something that has provided extreme pleasure and the way that it benefits your organization. So, um, and I see, yes, for some of our events, we look at other platforms if we have a different purpose. Excellent. Okay. So I think that that's a really great example. Awesome. 
Awesome. So interesting to see. So answering the poll questions. Um, did we go through all of the different poll questions? Have they had a chance to, to do all of that? Yes. Yes. All right. I'm trying to see on here. Do we have the big one? Yes. Okay. So we're going to go through and really contemplate this whole bit that you've just learned. And I'm going to ring the bell. Take a deep breath. Hi, Humphrey, you're sharing now. Great. Okay. Take a deep breath. Hold this platform in your hand. And you may not have this paperweight that represents your platform, but hold the platform in your hand. Deep breath. Is this platform bringing you joy? All right. And if you haven't already answered, then go ahead and answer. I'm very curious to see, go through and answer your poll questions. And then if we can go through, I'm curious to see what some of our responses are. All right. Does it match the purpose? Are you using it effectively? And does it spark joy? All right. And then I'm looking over here to see where we are. All right. Yes, 82%. No, 31%. This is are you using the platform you have effectively? So, and I would, I would ask that you dig into that a little bit, you know, dig into why it is that you're answering the way that you are. Is it because of training or education? Is it because of um, it not being user friendly? Go ahead and think about that. And if you want to share with the other people who are online right now, and who are able to respond back, I'd be curious to hear why, if you've answered that you're not using the platform you have effectively, why you're not, or why you think that you're not. This is fascinating. All right, and if we can have, did we have, uh, it's not yes or no, can we do most of the time? <laughs> yeah, and so can we have the spark, does it spark joy, Humphrey? Yes, 67%. That's great. And no, 33%. All right. So I want to stay on the positive here. And if it sparks joy for you, share in the comments, what is sparking joy for you? What are you using that's sparking joy? And this could be if your tool that you're considering is your uh, virtual and hybrid event platform, if it is sparking joy, go ahead and share. What's sparking joy? Let's share the good news. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the next area that we want to think about is your in-person events app. So a lot of associations offer in-person events. We know because we wouldn't be talking about the hybrid and the virtual if we didn't probably already have a time when associations were trying to bring our organizations together and um, bring our members together and meet in person. So that's definitely um, happening. People want to connect, but is your event app, is it bringing you joy? Is it being effective? All right, so we're gonna go through and think about this one step at a time. And I want you to think, and if we can uh, deliver the poll for in-person event apps, I'm gonna walk them through each one of these questions, all right? So does it match the purpose? Think about your event app, okay? Think about your event app. Does it match the purpose? Okay. And I'm looking over to see if it's, if it's uh, easy for us to get the poll up. Does it match the purpose? The next question would be, are you using it effectively? And then is it bringing you joy? 
Now for in-person events, um, there are a lot different of a lot of different things that go into the purpose. We can be coming together again for the education part. This can be for uh, the purposes of sharing information and doing business with one another. This can be for the purposes of um, other than conducting business for connecting with uh, prospects and it being you know focused on a trade show. It can be all kinds of different purposes. Think about your in-person events. Okay, uh, we switched to just the three main questions. All right. All right, so what I want for you to do now is to think about, does it match the purpose for your event app? And if you can type into the chat, does it match the purpose? Go ahead and think about your event app. Does it match the purpose? And I'm looking to see. All right. Yeah, Katrina's like, I would say yes, but I'm biased. And the next question is, are you using it effectively? Is it something where you know all of the different features and you know all of the different things that um, are, make it uh, valuable to have? You know, a lot of times when we have some of these tools, it's something that um, where we're not able to actually uh, use them to their greatest ability, but we're also sometimes too quick to let them go. And we're going to talk about the let them go part. All right. The next two areas that I want you to think about once you've already figured out whether your in-person events app brings you joy or not is education and online community. You would go through this process the same way as we've gone through it just now, asking yourself, does it match the purpose? Are you using it effectively? And does it spark joy? And those are the three questions that you should approach each one of your different tools in your tech stack if you want to do the Marie Kondo way to either keep it or toss it. Now, what to keep? What do you keep? You keep cherished items. You keep items that work really well for you. The items that, at least for the association community, are the closest that we can possibly get to bringing us joy. Maybe it doesn't exactly bring us joy, but it brings us what we need, and it brings us what we need in a positive way. If it's valuable to you in that way, of course, you want to keep it, and it makes you happy. Excellent. What do we want to toss? Sometimes it's really hard to get rid of the things that um, we already have. Maybe the board's already approved it and it would be hard to say, you know what, this tool didn't work and I'm asking you to invest in a new tool. Um, it could be that uh, you uh, have discovered it's way too difficult to manage yourself. And so your organization, it's just the wrong tool for it for whatever reason. Maybe your members and your participants are not particularly happy with the tool or it's not doing what you thought it would do. And there's also the possibility that you have a tool, you've discovered that um, it's not being updated. It's something that has, maybe it's fallen out of date in a, in a way that either the creator hasn't continued to update it, or it could be that technology has just moved beyond where it is. And even with all of the updates, it's just not meeting the, the purpose and the needs that you have. And in that case, sometimes it's really hard to let things go. So what if you discovered that you're, you aren't honoring your marketing automation tool? Or what if you discovered that you're not uh, delighted by your AMS? Letting go of things can make you feel guilty because you're holding on to the past. Another part of the Marie Kondo method is letting go with gratitude. And so with that, I'm going to wrap up our discussion today. And if you are letting go with gratitude, then you can think about your tool and you can say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the service that you've provided. Thank you for everything that you promised and that we experienced. Thank you for giving us hope for a while. 
and then you can let it go. <laughs> So when you free up room to let things go, hopefully with the KonMari method, um, then you are able to make room for new things in your event tech stack, in your association offerings, and elsewhere. <laughs>